Agency. Welcome to All About Kids. Hennepin County Family Court Services assists families in the process of divorce. The 20 family service counselors are there to help parents work out custody and parental access arrangements for their children. In most cases, this is done through mediation. That is, helping the mother and father negotiate an agreement on how the children will be parented when they no longer live together. When a family is stuck and can't negotiate its own custody agreement, or when the parents need more help, a family court services counselor makes a recommendation to the judge about how the children should be parented. The judge then makes the final decision for the family. Parental access problems or schedules are also dealt with at family court services. On today's program, Terry haugen sorstrom and Daryl McKenzie, staff members at family court services, talk with children about how their parents' divorces have affected them. Hello, Terry and I provide divorce counseling and mediation services for families who are going through divorce. A common theme we hear from the children is that divorce is very difficult for them. Many times kids have told us that no one has really taken the time or had the opportunity to talk to the kids about the divorce. Therefore, the divorce is oftentimes a surprise or a shock to the children. Today, we will show you what some children say about divorce. These children have dealt with the divorce pretty well. They have gotten support from family, friends, and counselors. We know that all children are not so fortunate. The children that you will be seeing today are going to be talking about what their parents have done to help them and what kids can do to feel better when there's a divorce in the family. I would say that if they're going to get divorced, um, try to, to get them to like each other because if you can make a divorce not happen, it, you know, it's pretty, your feelings are pretty strong. It's pretty good. Well, do you think the kids should try to get their parents to like each other? Yeah, I do, because if they get divorced, it's going to be pretty hard for the kid to start out. Well, don't you think that puts a lot of responsibility on the kids? Yeah, um, but it would be a lot of responsibility. Like, yo-yo, if you're switching, just is the divorce, too, though. Well, I remember <clears throat> hating my dad, but then I just hated what he did. Mm -hmm. And um, after about a year, I mean, I wouldn't even go see him mm -hmm. for a year. So I, I just, I just, I thought my mom would leave too. So you hated your dad? Yeah, but then I realized I hated what he did. Okay. Okay. And what he did was leave. leave. He moved out. Okay. And so, because you were so upset, you didn't see him for a year. Okay. How did that change for you? How did you figure out that you hated what he did instead of him? I talked to a priest. You talked to the priest. Was that helpful to you? Yeah. Good. Good. So how is it with you and your dad now? Well, it's pretty good, but remember, I don't know, I just got this thought a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Whenever my dad talked to my mom, mm -hmm. he was a good guy, she was bad, mm -hmm. and vice versa with my mom and my dad. And do you still hear those things between your mom and dad, that the other one's not so good? Sometimes. How does that make you feel? I don't know, it's like I'm supposed to pick a favorite, but... Oh. So you think when you hear one of them say bad things about the other one that you're supposed to agree and pick a favorite then? You're in the middle. Mm -hmm. Michelle, you said you talked to your priest about what was going on with you at the time of your parents' divorce? Yeah, well, I thought it was a sin to hate my dad. Mm -hmm. Did you have feelings of, of guilt regarding that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't feel very angry because 
it, it was it was building up for about a year. I mean, mm -hmm. I could tell they were always bickering. Mm -hmm. I was in second grade then. Oh. So. I, mean, it's, I don't remember very well, but. But um, you remember them being unhappy. Mm hmm I remember stating to them, so mom, when's the divorce or something? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I just, I'd say that, and, I mean, but I, I didn't know that, I mean, I, I knew if the, if the fighting kept on going mm -hmm. like this, but, but I thought they'd resolve it, but mm -hmm. they didn't. Also. They didn't, so there was a divorce. Mm hmm I remember talk, I'm talking to my dad and saying, I heard of the word, but I never, I never thought it would happen to us. Mm -hmm. So for you, your dad told you? It was like just a giant big nightmare that was never going to end. Kids can have many intense feelings when there's a divorce. They may feel sad, guilty, or angry. And they may even feel that they dislike or even hate one of their parents. How kids cope with these feelings oftentimes depends on their age. Children of different ages may have some of the same feelings, but the ways they cope are much different. And even though some kids knew that their parents were unhappy, they are surprised when they hear that their parents have decided to divorce. What we'll see next is that the kids oftentimes feel a desire to take care of one of their parents. This is especially true when children feel as though one of their parents have been hurt or that one of their parents are upset. At the same time, kids feel they need to take care of one of their parents. They may also feel a need to choose between their parents. You've talked about how you felt sad about yourselves uh, through divorce, uh, through your parents' divorce. Do you remember feeling sad for one of your parents when your parents were divorcing? Yeah. Sometimes I would take my mom's side because my dad has just been really mean to me and I would um, say that I like her more. And I would say that she was better than my dad. But then sometimes I get mad at my mom and I would take that back and say that my dad was. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for both my parents, but mostly my mom, because the day my dad told us, and she seemed really torn apart. You saw her be real sad and upset? Yeah. Well, sometimes kids say that when they feel sorry for one of their parents, when they feel sad for one of their parents when they're getting a divorce, that they feel as though they have to take care of their parents sometimes. Any feelings like that? That you needed to take care of one of your parents? I did because um, when my dad told my mom that, they were, that um, he was going to leave, my mom didn't eat or anything. She wouldn't eat anything. She stopped eating? Mm-hmm. And um, it made me feel really sad, so when we went out to eat, I said, Mom, please eat something, because she wouldn't eat anything, and she was, she was getting too thin, and, and um, it was just, there was so, many, so much leftovers. Sounds like you were worried about your mom. Did you think that something bad might happen? Well, I think that she might, um, she might start for herself to death, and she might die. That's pretty scary. Did you ever think that maybe your parents would get back together? No. No? You thought that they were going to get divorced? Well, I didn't know because I was only two and I just didn't know about that. Uh -huh. It's just mad because my mom was in with the hands. Mm -hmm. Did you find it confusing when you think back on it? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. You know, that can be a very confusing thing, can it? Yeah. Because you're so used to your parents being together, and then other people come in and take their, their position. Mm -hmm. It seems very confusing at times. When you have that feeling that you need to choose between your mother and your father, how do you change that? What kinds of things do you do to make that different? Um, I think it over. And then I know that if I pick one, the other one will be really sad. And so then I don't talk about it. So I don't talk about it with my mom or stuff. Because then if, see, sometimes I get mad at both of them. I say I like my dad or I like my mom or, and it's, 
and then I, sometimes I like my mom and sometimes I like my dad more, so mm -hmm. it's different every time. When parents are in a lot of pain, we find that they tend to turn to children sometimes for emotional support. We try to remind parents that this puts the children in an extremely difficult position. At the time of a separation, a divorce, or even a remarriage, the children have lots of intense feelings that they're just beginning to learn about. I just was mad and then I was sad and I just I tortured my pillow. You tortured your pillow? Yeah. Is that what you do sometimes? Yeah, I hit my pillow. I don't try to take it out on my, my um, friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. Pillow. Mm -hmm. Pillows don't talk back. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no. I just talked to my teddy bear and my doll. Mm -hmm. nice. They like that and hug when we talk to me. They're like best friends? Mm -hmm. Do they understand? I don't know. Sometimes mm -hmm. I, I think they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it hard staying connected with both your parents when they don't live together anymore? Mm -hmm. I think. Sometimes it is, yeah. And it's confusing. Confusing. Yeah. What's the confusing part? Well, sometimes you get mixed up and go to the wrong house after school and you don't know if you're in trouble. Oh. Okay. So that's the confusing part? Yeah, and I get mixed up sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. When my mom and dad, even though they're not seeing each other often, when they get in the fight, I would either like ask them, would you like some juice or something? <laughs> and then they would stop in the fight because they wouldn't be together, and then they would stop it, and then we would leave. Oh. And so I just want to get them out of the fight so they won't yell at me. Mm -hmm. and sometimes they'll get mad at me. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel better when they're not fighting. Often, kids say that the fighting between their parents, whether their parents are married or divorced, is tough on them. Kids may be anxious or nervous about a parent moving out of the home. They, like their parents, grieve over the loss of the way the family used to be. When my parents were first divorced, um, I went three day, two day, with um, alternate weekends, and that felt too yo-yo-ish. So. Um, now I'm now I go week on week off with each parent, so and it's longer, more time to to get organized in the house. But a lot of kids say it's important to have their own space, mm -hmm. their own room, their own shelf. Mm -hmm. Did you have feelings like that that you missed having that? Mm -hmm. Well, I felt like I had two shelves. One at <laughs> How did you work your clothes? Uh, um, I have to, I, every Sunday night, no, like I, every Sunday night I go to my mom's house and I stay there until the next Sunday night and I go to my dad's house. I pack up paper bags full of clothes and I go to my dad's house. It's just really confusing for my friends and they don't know what, what to call, who or who yeah. is this. But if, um, I do correct them right away when mm -hmm. they say, is your mom or is your dad or your stepdad? And yeah. I make sure that I do correct that right away. Uh -huh. um, then sometimes uh, when my friends come over and kids here, they call him stepdad, and I don't like that because uh -huh. I just don't. It's, it, he's just a dad. He's a normal person. Uh -huh. And there's a friend who's always careless. He forgets everything, and he always calls on them. I get mad at him. And um, what do you want people to call Kent? I just want them to call him Kent because mm -hmm. he's he's like a dad. Man. He mm -hmm. is one to me because. Mm -hmm. So you've got two dads. Mm -hmm. I think the parents should set the kids down and tell them what exactly is going to be happening mm -hmm. and who's going to, wh where they're going to live, when, and will they ever see the other parent that they're not living with and that they should stress the fact strongly that they it's not the children that they don't love anymore it's the parents that are getting a divorce and that's not going to change how they feel about the children so something like 
your mom will always be your mom and your dad will always be your dad even mm -hmm. though they choose not to live together anymore yeah. something like that what about if if you were giving other kids advice about um, maybe a divorce in their family what would you tell them um you should probably not try to pick favorites I mean mm. it just pro it probably just won't work I mean it, it, it can in certain situations but it didn't in mine so by picking a favorite you mean like you're sort of in the middle you have mm -hmm. to be loyal to one yeah. or loyal to uh -huh. the other you shouldn't listen to what one one of your parents is bad and mouthing about the other I mean because it would just get you into into <laughs> A mess, huh? Yeah. Well, I have a question for all of you about this, but do you think it's ever safe to tell your mom and your dad that you don't like to hear them saying bad things about the other parent? Or would that get you in trouble, too? Is it ever safe to say, please don't say that? What do you say, Chris? Um, I, I have before, and they both understood what I said, and they both try to avoid that now. But it took me a long time yeah. before I felt that I could do that or say that to him. What kinds of things do you think made it easier for you? Um, I saw my dad a lot, and my mom and my dad didn't seem to fight a lot. They were still friends. They just didn't love each other anymore. So being able to see both of your parents mm -hmm. and your parents not fighting. Yeah, that made it pretty easy. You know, that's uh, what we find, too. And that's what uh, many scientists have found, is that when parents don't fight, and when the kids get to see both parents, that things tend to turn out a lot better. Are you surprised? Not really. <laughs> We're not either. <laughs> I often hear that kids think that the divorce is their fault. Parents can be helpful by telling the kids that the divorce is never the children's fault. They can also communicate to the children that the children do not have the power to fix the marriage. When a parent gets settled into a new relationship with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or a remarriage, this is not only hard for the parent, but oftentimes is difficult for the child. We know that divorce is very stressful for children, that children grieve, and that children often hope for a reconciliation between their mother and their father. The children that we have seen today are fortunate to be able to have relatively free access to both their parents in a relatively unconflicted environment. Children do need someone to listen to them and someone to answer their questions. Parents can be very helpful and very reassuring to their children. They are in a wonderful position to talk to their children and to listen and they can remind the children that while parents may stop loving each other, they never stop loving their children. Public libraries in the metropolitan area have a wide variety of materials for children and adults about divorce. Today, Sarah Nagel, Children's Services Librarian at the Eden Prairie Community Library, will discuss some of these materials. Divorce can be a hard thing for anyone to understand and deal with. Children and young adults especially can be confused, angry, upset, even hopeless. They often feel caught in the middle. They wonder. Was it my fault? Will my parents still love me? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen in my daily life and where am I going to live? Will my parents ever get married again? Or will they get back together? These questions need to be answered for people to be able to deal with divorce. Books are a good resource that can help people deal with the problems, the anxieties, the fears, and the confusions created by divorce. Dinosaur's Divorce by Loreen Krasny Brown and Mark Brown is subtitled A Guide for Changing Families. Friendly dinosaurs in this reassuring picture book help children and parents deal with the feelings and anxieties which arise when people divorce. The dinosaur family learns to deal with situations such as why people divorce, living with one or two parents, and the confusion which can result from having 
two homes, step families, step parents, and holidays at all sorts of different houses. The text is simple and honest. The illustrations are bright and amusing. This book will appeal to preschoolers and elementary age children and their parents. It's a real family book. It helps to talk about these feelings and to let them show. It's okay to cry. In fact, crying can help you feel better. If you feel angry, tell your parents why and look for ways to show your anger that don't hurt others or yourself. If you are afraid or confused about what's happening in your family, tell your parents about how you feel and ask questions. Another book for families and children is On Divorce, an open family book for parents and children together by Sarah Bonnet Stein. In this book, photographs and a simple text explain the story for the child and an accompanying text is provided with more details for the adults. This resource helps to provide support in answering questions children may have about the story and about the idea of divorce. Where is daddy? Becky asks at supper time. Stop nagging, her mother shouts. He's working late again. And then the text says, not knowing what is on Becky's mind, her mother can't be very helpful, but she could offer more. She could, for instance, ask why Becky is so worried about where her daddy is, or reassure her that nothing has happened to him. This is indeed a good book for children and parents together. Jill Cremens, in How It Feels When Parents Divorce, wanted young people to talk about their feelings and their concerns so that she could make a book which would help other young people face their concerns. What Jill Cremens has done is taken realistic pictures of 19 young people who have gone through divorce and accompany that with their own stories, their own honest feelings about what they thought about the divorce and how they have dealt with it and how they are still dealing with it. Ida LeShan has written another helpful book, What's Going to Happen to Me When Parents Separate or Divorce. In the introduction, the author says, there are some things that can help you live through this experience and become stronger and happier. The most important thing children in divorced families need to do is to let themselves know all the feelings they are having. That takes a lot of courage, but it's the best way. What I would like to do is help you explore how you are feeling and to talk about all the normal and natural feelings that happen to children who are going through this experience. In a warm, empathetic manner, the author discusses the various stages of divorce, how to get to the painful time beforehand when things are going wrong, but you don't know what's happening and you don't know why, understanding just what a divorce entails in legal terms and the consequences for your family life in terms of custody, visitation rights, money problems that you may encounter, and feelings that you have when dealing with your two parents how to cope with your life now that the divorce is a fact and your life is now very different, how to deal with new family combinations, living with step-parents, step-brothers, step-sisters, and finally, how to view the divorce and make a life for yourself now that you know what the future may hold. Fiction and stories is also a good way for for children and young adults to deal with their feelings and to see how other people have coped with the problems of divorce. In Don't Make Me Smile by Barbara Park, 11-year-old Charlie Hickel is extremely sensitive and he is extremely upset when his parents get a divorce. He says, one of the worst things about my parents' divorce is that I'm supposed to go around smiling all the time. When they were together, I never had to smile unless I felt like it. But now, ever since they split up, I have to keep looking real jolly all the time. If I don't, it makes them feel guilty. Cheer up! Cheer up! That's all my mother keeps saying. Then she tries to make me smile. If there's one thing I really hate, it's having someone try to make you smile when you don't want to. 
Well, Charlie has a hard time talking about his feelings, so he takes them out in other ways. He's disruptive and rambunctious in class, and he gets upset with his parents over the most trivial things. Finally, his parents, with the help of a counselor, help Charlie discover his true feelings so that he can talk with them. He learns that it's impossible to, impossible to be sad forever, and that even he has started to smile when he looks in the mirror. Another good book for young people is The Divorce Express by Paula Danzinger. You know all those novels about divorce? They're mostly for the kids who are just starting it. There should be one about a kid who's lived with it for a long time. Then you'd see that we all survive it. That's what Rosie says to her friend Phoebe in The Divorce Express. The Divorce Express is the nickname of a bus that many children of divorced parents take when they go from their homes in upstate New York, where they live during the week with one parent, to visit their other parent in New York City during the weekend. Rosie's parents have been divorced for years, so now she shows Phoebe the ropes, how to deal with her anger, how to adjust to live in two different places, step-parents and renegotiating agreements as you change. She blends characteristic wit and humor with an understanding of what it's like to be a teenager living with divorce today. These are just a few of the many books available on divorce at your public library. Thanks for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency. We thank you for watching and we hope you visit your public library often.